Hello there team. This quick video today is going to show you how to use the uh, email text uh, message in Crimson to send out a, uh, a text message or email whenever a certain condition exists or some tag equals something uh, to set out an alarm. So in this case, uh, this is the usual application that we have in our uh, Crimson class so, so far. We've been building this HVAC application and uh, as you can see in this application, I've set it to defaults. I've got no set points here right now. So uh, if the temperature goes above, it really it's not going to turn on the heater uh, or the air conditioner in this case. So uh, let me go to the Crimson program first. So here's the Crimson database. And if I go over to communications on the left, and then if I slide down a little bit, and team, I want to get into the into the services section over here. Because in the services section, there's a item here called the mail manager. So if I click on the mail manager right here, it brings up this area right here. And you can see right here where it says list of contacts. If I click the edit button here, it has a pop-up. And you can see right now there are no uh, names listed here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put one in. I'll put in, uh, let's see, this here. And then you're going to put in two things. Uh, if you want to send an email to somebody, you'll put the email address right here. If you want to send a text message to them, typically you're going to put their phone number at, and then you're going to have to find out that provider, uh, who you, you know, what you send it to. So for instance, if you have an AT&T account, uh, you're going to put your phone number there. Uh, let's just make something up here. Uh, let's see. So if you were a AT&T user, you would put in uh, your phone number, txt.att.net. Enter that would be if you were a a AT&T user. If you were, say, for instance, a uh, say you're a Verizon user. Well, let's see here. Four, two, three, two, three. Let's say you were a Verizon user. You put that in. Then with Verizon, you do vtext.com, and then. Uh, if you're uh, T-Mobile, then you put in, I think it's tmobile.com. And if you just Google, I had a customer in last week's class who was using a Pioneer phone service uh, somewhere in Oklahoma. They had a different method, and we found it. So anyway, that's what you'll do there. Uh, I'm going to use, uh, put in uh, an email address here. I should have made one up for this. But, oh, okay, so uh, I'm going to put in a, a Gmail address to see if this works. So I'll click OK. Uh, under the SMTP tab right here, right here, team, is the settings for your uh, email server. So you're going to need to get from your uh, IT department this information here to fill in correctly. Um, I happen to use a company called Auth SMTP for my relay service. It works out good, but uh, uh, you can show this to your IT department, and they should get you the settings for that. So if I go over here to data tags, now that I got that set up there, if I go to data tags in this example, and I'm going to expand room one, for instance, and I got all these tags, and this is typically from the uh, Crimson class that I teach, but if I go to a tag here called heat AC, in that Crimson class, we, we pretty much know three things with this tag. We know that if equals zero, nothing's on. We know that if it equals a 1, the heater's on, and if it equals a 2, the air conditioner should be on. Matter of fact, I think if I click on the Format tab here, you can actually see that down here because I'm in the class. We set this up as a multi-state right here, and then I list the states here. So notice, 0, 1, and 2. So let's say, for instance, team, that I wanted this HMI to send me an email anytime the heater goes on uh, and anytime the air conditioner goes on. I want you to notice one equals the heater on and number two equals the AC running. Just remember one and two here. One is the heater and two is the AC. So I've got that thinking in my back pocket. So I'm going to click on, for this example, the alarms tab right here. Click on the alarms tab. And on the alarms tab, notice by default it's disabled. I'm going to hit the pull down here and I'm going to, you got all these options. You got data match, mismatch high, low, fall, and so forth. I'm going to pick the data match. And the reason I'm going to pick data match is because I know the number one equals the heaters on, 
and number two equals the air conditioners on. So listen, if I put a number one right here in the value field, I'm going to put a one right here, that means anytime this tag equals that number there, I'm going to generate this alarm here, and I want to send it to somebody. So let's uh, say up here, I'm going to say event name, uh, room, oops, that's not room, heater is on. I'll do that. And then right down here where it says mail to recipient, hit the pull down and choose wazoo. And then uh, in the class that I teach, uh, if we set this acceptance from manual to automatic, that means that it'll keep sending out every time it triggers this. If you leave this at manual, then it's going to send it out one time and you've got to use the alarm viewer to clear it or acknowledge it. So I'm not going to cover that today in this video. So I'm going to set that to automatic. That means, number one, the heater's on. If I go down here to data match, or I'm sorry, alarm two, choose data match here, I'm going to put a value here of number two this time. And then here, where it says event name, I'm going to type room AC is on. Okay. And once again, oops, that thing did it automatically, but I'm going to make this automatic there. And then, of course, change the poll down here to whatever name. Okay, so I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and download this to the HMI. We'll go ahead and pull up the web page here. Give it a second to refresh. It'll come back to the default setting here. At least I think. Okay, so here we go. I'll go into the main room here. Notice there's no set points. So I'm going to put in... An AC set point here of 75, for instance. And maybe I'll put a heat set point here of, say, 25 for this example. So anytime that the temp F goes above this, it should send me a message if it's in the AC mode. And if it drops below the heat set point, if it's in the heat mode, it should send me a message there, too. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I have a simulator here. Just a second here. I'm going to open up the simulator. This is the unit that is simulating my temperatures. So I'll just make it a little smaller, set it right there. And, uh, oh, you know what? I need to make that a floater. Hold on. There we go. Then I'm going to make this guy full screen. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy in free mode so it, they'll oscillate up and down like that. Perfect. Here I am back here. The fan is something else. That's part of the class. But I'm going to let this guy go. I'm going to put this in the heat mode. So I've got it in the heat mode now. So whenever that temperature drops below 25, uh, we'll see maybe a flame thing here. And we're hoping to see here in my email system, possibly an email. So there, the fire's on. The heater is currently on. You can see it right here. It shows it here. And let's go over here to my, hey, look at here, team. I just got a text message or not a text, but an email. Look, there's the message I got right there. Okay, so if we go back to the HMI, and uh, we're going to turn the, that mode off, I'm going to let it oscillate below, well, I guess I can do it here. I turn on the air conditioner, look, the air conditioner, because it's clearly above. I'm curious, did it trigger another message? Let's see over here. Look, matter of fact, it did. I got a message here. So pretty darn easy to use the email uh, message under the alarms tab to generate messages. Now, one thing I am going to do in this example uh, is I'm going to turn this mode off because if I leave this on, every time this thing trips, it's going to send a message. So I'm going to leave this, uh, put this back in the off position. That way it doesn't continually send me email messages. And of course, I could do also the same thing. I could easily go to the RTU unit here that is simulated values. I could turn off the polling, hit reset. They all sit it the 50 percentile. Anyway, that's just a quick video team on how you can use the uh, email text data match to send out a message, a text or email. The key thing to this example, the key thing is that you need to get these settings here under the SMTP settings from your IT department. If you want to borrow my settings for this and use it for testing, feel free to send me an email. I'll be glad to share it with you. I will tell you honestly that I use the company called AuthSMTP. 
which is just going to be off smtp.com. And if I log into my site, let's see if it's going to work today. This cost me $36 a year for 1,000 messages a month, email or text. That's $36 a year, which means it's $3 a month. Pretty cheap, if you ask me. Anyway, uh, here's the panel for this Auth SM2P. Let me get a little coffee here. Mm, that's good. And what's nice about it, for me anyway, is that it keeps track of the messages here. So you can see uh, whatever this month, I've taught a number of classes, so we've, we've generated quite a bit of message. But I think I can go to is it account usage and message log, and it will actually show you here the messages. So last week I was teaching a class, so these are some of the uh, email addresses people had. But uh, yeah, anyway, so you're welcome to borrow my account. I'll be certainly uh, willing to share that with you. The key is you can borrow it for testing, and then once you get it working, you just need to go. Really, with the best thing, team, would be to get these settings from your IT department and then use your, your settings. But uh, feel free to borrow mine if you want. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Uh, send me an email or send me a message here on YouTube, and I'll be uh, glad to uh, send you the database examples. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, folks.